to Midwife Par Excellence. It's always a good time when I see you and I just know that you're excited to see me too. Today the topic I have is quite common. We, we don't really pay much attention to it but it is quite common somewhat. All right. We're talking about sudden infant death syndrome. I'm sure somewhere along the line you would have been told what to do, what not to do to prevent this situation. All right, and sudden, sudden infant death syndrome is really, this is an unexpected sudden death of a child under the age of one year old, right? In which an autopsy does not show an explainable cause of death. So the child has died and after an autopsy, nothing could be shown as to what the diagnosis is and the cause of death. In that case, now it is considered sudden infant death syndrome. We're moving on to the causes, and there are quite a number of causes. Really, the first one would have to be unknown, because really and truly, we, we can only speculate when a child dies as to what could be the issue. Worst case scenario, the autopsy does not show anything, then you have to be just saying it's unknown. The child just died for no apparent reason, all right? So the first cause would be unknown. The second one says problems with the baby's inability to wake up. So for us as adults, we'll just get up um, at any given time with this baby and it could be further down where we will see that it could be an undetected brain, brain defect with the child that, that, that is in charge of the sleeping, right? And that went awry so the child was unable to wake up on his or her own, right? The inability of the baby's body to detect a buildup of carbon dioxide in the blood. Alright? Possible problems with the part of their brain that controls breathing, heart rate, and temperature, as I had said before. Now we're moving on to the incidence. Most likely to occur between the ages of two to four months old. So the babies who are between the ages of two to four months old, they have seen that this condition has more been blamed for that age group. The child has up until age one, but between ages two to four months old is when they note that this condition is more, right? It affects boys more than girls. It does aff affect both sex, but the boys have noted to have a higher incidence than the girls in this condition. Causes have fallen drastically, right? Due to parents being told to put babies to sleep on their backs or sides to reduce sudden infant death syndrome. So, in a study that they did, they realized that for those parents who heeded to the morning to place the babies on their backs, they realized that there has been a drastic fall in the sudden infant death, death cases, right? Due to the babies being placed to sleep on their backs. We continue risk factors so there are some risk factors that contributes or possibly contribute to a child having sudden infant death syndrome sleeping on the stomach all right so what they're saying is that do not put the babies especially between ages of two to four months birth to four months where they're unable to turn from belly to back belly to back on their own once the child is able to turn him or herself independently, then fine, you can put that baby on the abdomen to sleep. But until then, it is rec recommended that the child be placed on the back to sleep instead of the abdomen. Because what will happen is that that child would, would have lost, and what they have noted is would have lost that arousal, right? That arousal to wake up. And that is when sudden infant death syndrome takes place. Exposure to secondhand smoking, alcohol, or drugs, right? So during the pregnancy and after the pregnancy, for those babies who their mothers were smoking, taking drugs, or having alcohol, there is an increased risk for these babies to fall prey to sudden infant death syndrome. Soft bedding in the crib. So it is recommended that the mattress be firm 
so it shouldn't be soft and squishy where the child can suffocate or stuff like that or bad posture which could be one of the causes for sudden infant death syndrome we want firm mattresses in the crib all right for those children who are a part of a twin triplets and above these babies have been noted to have a higher risk of having sudden infant death syndrome sleeping in the same bed as other children or parents and of course it can cause from suffocation they were crushed unknowingly and other right hidden brain defect as i said before so even upon a scan or a certain assessment it is not noted that the child had a brain defect all right having a sibling who died from sudden infant death syndrome so if my brother had died from sudden infant death syndrome or a close sibling would have died from uh, in sudden infant death syndrome that predisposes this child to also be a possible at possible risk for sudden infant death syndrome also being born to a mother who is under age 20 years old teenage mother all right the risk is greater as per the research that I did very short time between pregnancies so if the pregnancies are very close we find that these babies are also at risk for sudden infant death syndrome late or no prenatal care so there are some mothers who have appeared to us before just one time when they came to us she's practically nine months or they never had any care during the pregnancy and they just came in for labor and delivery these babies are at risk for developing sudden infant death syndrome prematurity so those babies who are born prematurely that is before the 37 week um, gestational age or for those babies who are premature but are extremely small they're at a higher risk than a term baby for sudden infant death syndrome now what are the symptoms and as we said before we really don't know all right um, almost all sudden infant deaths occur without any warning or symptoms right so you put your baby to sleep and when you go back there there's no there's a lifeless baby in the bed you didn't get a scream you didn't get a warning nothing said to you oh Go and check the baby and it is also good too now that I talk about this that you check on the baby every so often just take a peek go and check the baby's respiration make sure that it's going okay stuff like that all right so there really isn't any symptoms or signs it just happens all right now there's as we said before there's nothing there's no sign or symptom but there are preventative measures that you can take if it is gonna happen it will happen but there are some things that you can do as parents and guardians to at least minimize the chances of sudden infant death syndrome all right so we're gonna talk about some preventions it says here put baby on the back to sleep when they can roll on their own then it is okay to put the baby on the tummy and I said that from the get-go keep the baby on the back so therefore even if something is wrong that reflex that frightening reflex that the child the moral reflex that the child would have had would have frightened them out of their sleep if anything should go wrong if they're on their abdomen and they develop difficulties they can't call you they can't do anything and they just stay there until they die all right so until the child is rolling rolling independently on their own from back to front then it is okay that you can place your child on the abdomen all right only put baby to sleep on a firm flat surface all right and preferably a crib no sheets no pillows or other loose objects are to be in the crib with the baby and it cannot be stressed no small objects no loose items um, pillows you want to avoid babies using pillows sheets blankets all of that and as I said before if you're gonna put a light blanket over the baby ensure you check ever so often on that baby and that is to prevent choking on the small objects and the suffocation all right 
do not allow baby to sleep in bed with other children or adults and it goes without saying suffocation you might roll over on that baby I mean if you put the child to sleep with the brother in the sleep they don't know what they're doing he could have been on top of him the entire night rolled off didn't know that he was on the baby and when you come in the morning to see what is happening or when you come periodically to pre to probably feed the baby now that's when you're gonna realize that that's a lifeless baby it is unexplained right so to prevent that baby is not allowed to sleep with anybody at all all right bear in mind that for parents the baby can sleep in the room but just not in the actual bed right, right so we're continuing it says ensure the room temperature is not too hot all right should be a comfortable room temperature and do not overdress the child for bed right so don't put on um pampers pin under then monkey suit then you swaddle the baby in two blankets no the baby should at the room should be at a comfortable temperature and the baby should not be over swaddled all right do not smoke or use drugs right during or after the pregnancy and I had already outlined before what could happen to the baby all right ensure adequate prenatal care eat healthy all right take your vitamins and attend your antenatal checkups regularly now breastfeed the baby if possible all right as it reduces some respiratory tract infections that may influence the development of sudden infant death syndrome. Right? Never give honey. And listen, I have done a presentation on this before. Never give honey to a baby that is below one year of age. The likelihood is that this child will develop a condition called botulism, all right, which could also lead or cause the child to be at a risk for sudden infant death syndrome. So I'm going to repeat, never give a baby below the age of one year old honey. All right, I know many of us use it for medicinal purposes, especially if the child possibly develop a cold. I am here telling you, if you have done it before, don't do it again. And if you have not done it as yet, please do not do it. All right, thank you. So now that we have discussed sudden infant death syndrome, it is something that can be very frightening because you put your baby to sleep not knowing what can happen. You know, parents, and I've heard persons who are very scared out of their minds, they'll stand over the baby and watch the baby sleep. But I can tell you, put your baby to sleep. Remember the signs, the, well, there are no signs and symptoms, but the preventative measures that you can take to lessen the chance right remember from the inception of pregnancy or even before you want to start taking your vitamins and you have to understand that a good antenatal experience creates a wonderful postnatal experience all right so the onus is on us partly too so remember these 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 preventative measures and the causes the incidents that we spoke about today and we should be fine all right, I thank you again. It has been good being here today. All right, remember to listen to the posts, subscribe, comment, share with a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell somebody you don't even have a clue who they are. Once they get the information, that's fine. Remember to click the notification button. All right, so you are aware whenever I do come on and make a post. I thank you again for being here with me. This is your midwife, par excellence. Have a good day.